Hi everyone, my name is Elmer Siv, a history teacher at St. John's College High School, and I'm going to talk to you today about the book Maximo, The Last Alcalde of San Jose Palmar. I work on this book along with Carmen Carillo, Yasser Musa, and Carlos Quiroz. This team aimed to record and analyze the oral accounts on the life of Maximo Perez through the eyes of Misael Perez, his son, and Carmen Carillo, his granddaughter. By extension, while talking about Maximo, the publication discusses the history of Palmar by making connections between the Cas War, Yalbak, which is an area in Cayo, and colonial enterprises, and the village's relocation to the outskirts of Orange Rock Town. Carmen Carillo, a lifelong educator and poet, contacted us to share her story and advocated for a publication to cement her grandfather's historic actions. It was a true moment to share history, culture, and a message for community resilience. We saw it as an opportunity to widen and enrich the population's appreciation for the history and culture of Palmar and the region. The story, we thought, was important to nourish, one, a sense of Mayan Belizean identity, two, a rootedness and connection to the past, and three, an encouragement of community continuity to the usage of historical lessons. These interrelated aspects fueled a vision to foster a process of questioning of the past and a curiosity of the legacy of the Maya ancestors and colonialism in Belize. The project started with a visit to San Jose Palmar, in which we spoke to Misael and Carmen about the story. It was two hours filled with a lot of knowledge and, and emotions. From the onset, I knew the powerful message behind the story and a cluster of themes revolved in my mind. A month later, I returned to have an official audio recorded session with both Misael and Carmen. The interviews were recorded, transcribed, and then the writing process began. Today we launched the book as a product driven by the community and intended to appeal to all Belizeans. The narrative recounts the painful history of San Jose Yalbak through the eyes of Eleanor, who one day sat down to talk to her nostalgic father. The unexpected conversation quickly turned into an extensive discussion about the community's formation, triumphs, and tribulations. Summarized as an emotional encounter, both Misael and Eleanor recount the refugee-like history of their community and the several stages of psychological depression. Although Eleanor, better known as Carmen, maintained a master's degree in education, she was unaware of the community's history. After being informed of her ancestors' past and her grandfather's rule, she merits the community's existence to their, to their actions. In the story, Carmen's reflective perspective is an analysis of her father's narrative. This oral history attempts to provoke a reanalysis and the questioning of San Jose Nuevo Palmar. The book is developed as a retrospection to the past from a present day perspective. It is a recorded conversation that presents history and a short analysis of each major event in a chronologic and thematic manner. The central themes being displacement, sovereignty, culture, community resilience, social capital, survival, and the impact of colonialism. To give a better perspective, I want to focus on two aspects of the book. First, the forceful displacement of the people from San Jose. Now, San Jose Palmar, or just to retract that, San Jose Yalbak was located in the Cayo district, almost in isolation or far away from the towns, both in Cayo and, and from Orange Rock. Um, after several years of occupation, the Maya who came running away from the Caswar had established a lifestyle there, and, and they were already to their second generation on that particular land. Years after occupation, a colonial, company, a colonial company wanted to evict the villagers. The company was given rights to the land and was therefore imposing its de jure title, or title on paper. This to me is a crucial moment because it presents two different understandings of ownership. On one hand, the Maya organization of ownership was based on clearing, occupation, and farming. Traditionally, the Maya respected each other's land. On the other hand, a Western notion of ownership was being imposed by the Crown and the company. These clashing views bring into focus the understanding of how ownership is connected to sovereignty and how sovereignty is controlled by those who have power. A similar scenario is happening with the Maya down south. And I just wanted to highlight this because it's something that has occurred before and it seems like it, it is continuing to happen because of the understandings of property or different understandings of property, sovereignty, and power as well. The second aspect I want to mention 
is the force for relocation of these people and when they were already living in Orindra in soldiers barracks. To me this is perhaps the saddest part of the story. The people were outrooted from a land that they considered theirs, from a, lifestyle, from a lifestyle that was established and from a symbol of identity. Their life had shifted completely. In Yalbak they controlled their source of food and needed limited money. They enjoyed an agricultural lifestyle and relative freedom. Once they were driven to Orindwak, their agency was limited. They were now in barracks and limited money and no productive land to farm. They were given limited opportunities and depression step, um, set in. This depression was coupled with a culture shock from agriculturally free to dependent workers. These are just two themes or central events that the book presents. It is a rich account of history and community. Before I end, I want to reiterate that this book is an effort to maintain a connection with the past, with a Maya identity and with ourselves. It is an important story especially in these times as we face COVID-19. Despite all the challenges, Maximo and his people forged community, and through community resilience, they shaped San Jose Nuevo Palmar, a story that originated with hearing a grandfather speak of his day, a story that was kept in the heart of, of a granddaughter. That story is changing the narrative. Whenever you hear your elders, sit down, talk to them, make note of those stories. Record those stories, transcribe those stories. Those accounts are precious and provide us with deep messages of who we are and where we're going. Will you talk to your grandfather, grandmother, father or mother next? Hear them. It heals and enriches. Plus, writing these stories is a beautiful show of love and a testament of community continuity. Thank you.